again our viewers of Civic Space TV. Welcome to Women at the Front Lines. My name is Nega Madrin and uh, yeah, so happy to be here on this particular day. I hope you're all doing well and uh, to those that are not well, we really wish you all the best and uh, yes, so today on this episode, I have uh, Miss Nawanyaka Gloria. Gloria, I know many of you might have seen her somewhere because she is, yes, she's into, she's a common person. And uh, yeah, so we are really excited to have Gloria on this episode. Gloria, thank you so much for coming. Pleasure is mine. Yeah, we are really yeah. honored. Pleasure is mine. Yeah, how are you? I'm good. How yeah, are you? Fine. You're looking great. <laughs> thank how you. How did we, you know, get the black <laughs> in the one? I know. <laughs> You're looking beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, so Gloria is a human rights lawyer. She's advocating for people living with HIV and AIDS. Gloria is also a founder of the <clears throat> Young Positives Foundation, which is empowering, equipping, and educating young people infected and affected with HIV. Gloria is also a founder of the y plus music band this is a young people using their talent to create positive impact in society through uh, entertainment she's a global ambassador of the students hiv awareness she's an influencer uh social social media influencer yes so gloria is doing a lot of work she is the means y plus that is 2017 2018 yes i think i've said a few of the things mm -hmm. that gloria is doing but i'll mm -hmm. give her this chance to introduce herself to you and tell us more about what she is doing about herself gloria thank you so much uh maybe to uh, just uh i don't know correct you a little bit okay um, it is gilo Ah. Young Positives Foundation. Okay. Yes. I'm so privileged to be here. I've always been, uh, I've always seen Civic Space TV. Civic Space TV. Everywhere. I'm wow. like, when am I going to be there? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so much humbled to be here. Uh, as she said, my name is Gloria Nawanyaga. I am a young person born and living with HIV for the past 27 years now. Wow. I'm beautifully living wow. with HIV. But of course, I'm not encouraging people out there uh. to go and get HIV. <laughs> Because it's not easy to live with HIV. True. It's not easy to take medication every yeah, day. Yeah. It's not easy to deal with the stigma and discrimination that comes with, you know, with being positive with HIV. Mm. So it is a lot. If you are HIV negative, I always urge young people to keep it safe. Keep safe. Gloria is also a human rights lawyer, so passionate about advocating uh, for the rights of vulnerable people, not only people li living with HIV, mm. but anyone who is vulnerable, and anyone whose human rights are being violated, you'll see Gloria coming on board to see that there is justice. Yeah. Yes, and <laughs> I believe that um, also Civic Space uh, TV uh, is one of those, you know, um, of platforms yeah. that uh, promote human rights for all. Yes. which is so great yeah. that, that means i'm in the right place you're in the right place <laughs> yes and i'm also proud to say that um i am i'm, I'm one of those people who went ahead to sue pastor Sempa that served uh, with pastor Sempa and uh sehad sehad is center for human rights and development mm. and i'm glad that uh, the equal opportunities commission uh, ruled in our favor wow. and uh, of course now it is a crime for someone to uh, stigmatize and uh, discriminate someone using social media so whoever who is doing that mm -hmm. be careful Others be careful come for you <laughs> Gloria, <it's here. laughs> i know so i'm also the founder of gilo young posters foundation which is a youth-led charity organization that empowers equips and educate young people both living wow. and affected with HIV yeah. to improve on their livelihoods and well-being. Mm. As you said, I'm a singer. I love singing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I have a, have a good voice. Eh? Wow. <laughs> so, Maybe so you will give us a cappella <laughs> at the end of the show. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. So we do a lot of advocacy uh, while um, using our talents at the same time and developing talents for still both young people mm. are living and affected and we do edutainment. Wow educating and entertaining, entertaining at the same time wow. yeah but we also have a live band still under the y plus music band so please give us some gigs uh -huh. <laughs> yes give us some money we you know do all live band performances at all events weddings what what everything mm. yes um what else have i forgotten <laughs> 
I'm a humanitarian. Uh, I love charity. I love giving back to the community. I love, I belong to the communities. I love empowering people, especially down in the grassroots. I love associating with them. Mm. And I can say that for the past uh, two years, I have been in Kasanda District, okay. uh, where I've been volunteering with Building Tomorrow, okay. which is an organization that promotes quality education for all. Mm. And uh, we make sure that all young people, all children in rural areas, get literacy, basic skills of literacy and numeracy. Oh. And uh, I've been so much amused by how, you know, these community people embrace, you know, us volunteers in, you know, in these areas. Mm. And I've been working with them. I have reached out over 1,000 children wow. in Kasanda District uh, with uh, basic literacy and numeracy mm. and also have made sure that we have, uh, you know, uh, communities that embrace and support the education system. I've been able to... Um, uh, um, I've uh, been able to uh, reach out to and engage over 50 volunteers. Uh, they are called CEVs, Community Education Volunteers, mm. who have been helping me to identify out-of-school children, uh, children that are out of school, out but of they school. are supposed to be in school. True. <laughs> and we have been working with you know the local government, the district, to see that all children go to school. Yes, and I'm also a social media influencer, oh. in case you have some gigs or social media influencing <laughs> I'm around. <laughs> I'm diverse, to be honest. I'm diverse everywhere. I can, Indeed. I can. And she's going to tell us how she is doing all that kind of work, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of multitasking. Yeah. So, Gloria, tell us more about yourself, experiences, childhood mm -hmm. experiences. How was it growing up? Mm -hmm. Knowing that, uh, did you know that you're, 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 you're infected? or? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I got to know about my HIV status when I was 11 years. Okay. And at that time, I was in my primary five, I think. If I'm not mistaken. And uh, I remember asking my mother, why am I taking medication all the time? Yeah. Uh, why are you taking me to hospital all the time? And at first she was afraid to tell me, uh, I believe due to maybe the stigma and discrimination associated mm. to HIV. So I think later on she realized that I'm growing up and I'll still get to know. Yeah. And this is my life after all at the end of the day. So she decided to take me somewhere. Mm. Like it was sort of an outing to give me that, you know, uh, kind of you know environment, environment yes is, yeah. <laughs> yes yeah so uh, after us having fun enjoying eating nice food then she poses a question to me and asks me um what do you know about hiv at the age of 11 what would you answer i, I don't really know <laughs> because yes uh, what, at, at 11 i, I don't know. think i would know anything mm. about it uh, for me oh. uh, what i knew at that time was hiv kills because at school, posters were everywhere that yeah. HIV kills. They would teach us at school, HIV what? Kills. kills. So definitely what I knew was mm. HIV kills. Mm. And I told her what I know about HIV is mm. HIV kills. Mm. So I saw her frightened. And then she later on asked me, what will you do if you find out that you're HIV positive? <laughs> at the age of 11, you can imagine. <laughs> so um, I didn't answer her. Because I connected the dots. I think I was also maybe smart. A smart one. <laughs> yeah, a smart kid. So I connected the dots of uh, me asking her about the medication, me asking her about uh, the, the medical checkups and all that. Then I realized that I'm HIV positive. And at that time, I hated myself. Oh. I hated my parents. I always judged them. Why did they give me my their virus yeah. for me to suffer, you know? But uh, I'm glad that I'm over it now. I totally accepted myself. I Can I say forgive, you know, yeah. <laughs> them? And I remember my mother would always tell me there is no parent who would wish bad for their children. True. Yeah, and but it wasn't an, an easy experience at that time because I remember I even tried to commit suicide because I thought I'm going to die. Of course, I knew if, if I have HIV oh, and death. everyone is telling me that HIV kills, kills, so I'm going to die. So I didn't have any hope. I didn't see any future. That is why I even wanted to kill myself. But I'm glad I didn't die. Otherwise, I would not be here well, on, the civic, <laughs> <laughs> on the Civic Space TV. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so it took me over 10 years for me to 
fully accept myself. And uh, I remember I was kept on struggling with the, the, the self-stigma. So we have two types of stigma. We have the self-stigma that you inflict on yourself yeah. and then the external stigma yeah. where people come um, and, and stigmatize, uh, stigmatize you. So um, when I uh, reached P7, remember that was around P5 mm. when I got to know, I, I was still struggling. And uh, by that time, I was not even in good terms with my parents right. and everyone at home. And uh, it was a time that uh, it happened that at my school that I was studying, um, I was studying at at that time, it was a must for all P7 students, uh, pupils to be in boarding section. Okay. So I had to go to this, you know, uh, boarding section. But I was very happy, not because, I'm, oh. not because that I'm going to a boarding section, mm. but because I'm going to go away from home where they forced me to take medication. Oh, so you thought at school. Uh -huh. Of course, I thought at school no one is going to force me to do what? To take medication. And indeed, no one forced me to take medication. And I can tell you that whole year, I you didn't take you medication. Didn't take... And guess what happened to me? I got AIDS. Oh. There is a difference between HIV, HIV and AIDS. AIDS. Right now, I have HIV. I don't have AIDS. But AIDS is the combination of all those different diseases that you can think of. Mm. Um, malaria, TB, mm. uh, I don't know. You name it, all those different, different, you know, those bad, bad diseases. So they put me down. And uh, I remember that time that was back then before um, uh, there is a certain level of virus viruses you should be having in your blood for you to be given. ARVs. So mm -hmm. I was on septrin by the time I had okay. not yet, you know, uh, uh, gotten, uh, had not yet started the treatment, the ART treatment. But of course, now the policies change. Now we have test and treat, whereby when they test you, immediately they test you HIV positive, <coughs> they give you treatment. You start mm -hmm. on treatment immediately, which was not. Uh, by uh, which which was not the case back then, so uh, the uh, the illnesses put me down and uh, trust me. Uh, I was not as beautiful as you see me. Yeah. I had rushes everywhere. I was you see that I'm, I I don't know I don't know if I'm tiny or what. <laughs> but I was bones oh. by that time. You would literally see my skeleton. And uh, of course rumors had to spread around the village that uh that girl has city <laughs> that is in Uganda. So uh I remember uh after you know that 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 kind of period, after me getting some strength, I would move around the village and I would hear people, you know, backbite yeah. me. That is a girl who has CD, that is a girl who has HIV and all that. And I think also some parents who had the rumors told their children not to not to play with me. I realized that after I got better and I went back to because I that was in my first P7 vacation and I had I, I had to go for secondary. So I didn't join immediately. In fact I joined for I joined in second term. So the mm. whole of first term mm. I did I didn't study. So uh when I went back to school, I, I, I happened to go to a school uh, where a kid of a neighbor was also studying uh, from and that neighbor had heard had. about my what? my status so immediately he saw me he told uh, kids in school that that yeah. girl has hiv don't do what don't play with her, with her it was so <laughs> terrible it was so terrible it was so terrible that i even had to run away from school and uh, still at that time it was a time i was still struggling with myself accepting myself struggling with, with the uh, you parents. know loving with, yeah, yeah loving my parents and all that so i could not tell my parents what i was going through I was stigmatized a lot in school. Like, I was so much traumatized. And I would leave home in the morning, going to school, and uh, I would not reach school because at school I wasn't feeling safe. I wasn't, there was, the, the environment there was not favorable for me to be there. So I would go somewhere and hide. Then during time of going back home, you go home. Uh -huh, I would go home. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, it, yeah. It was not an easy situation, but maybe to take you back, um, that time when uh, I got AIDS and I was supposed to start treatment, uh, because of the vi the virus in my blood, they call it viral load. Mm. I had a lot of viruses in my blood that even when I was started on treatment, it could not help me. So I got what is called drug resistance. 
Mm. That's because I was not taking medication. Yeah. The virus was so high, so the drugs they gave me couldn't, do couldn't work on me. So they had to admit me to hospital. And uh, I take my, my drugs from DSRC, that is Joint Clinical Research Center, and mm. I'm so proud of mm-hmm. that home of mine, because it's my second home. Yeah. If I don't go there, trust me, I yeah. can't live, because mm. my ARVs are my life. So um, when I went to this um, ward, they had an AIDS patient's ward, and uh, I remember this uh, worst scenario, one of the worst scenarios that happened to me at that time. Uh, I was bedridden, given a, a bed in this ward. I had my neighbors um, at night, one day at night. I'm speaking to my neighbors very well, because all of us are suffering from the same thing. So um, uh, I'm speaking to her, we are jazzing and everything is okay. Then in the morning, I wake up and the bed is empty. Oh. And I ask my mom, what where happened? is my friend? I mean, we were jazzing at night uh, before we slept. Where is she? And my mom told me that she died oh. in the morning, you know, that at around four when we were asleep, still asleep. And I guess what would what would you think if you're the one? Definitely, I thought I'm next. I'm next. So I was very frightened. I was, trust me, I thought I was next at that time. But I'm glad. <laughs> I thank God I got out of that world because I even remember uh, after some time, because you go back and they follow up on you. They told me that even my neighbor who was on my right oh. also passed on. So it's not easy. That's what I said earlier. It's not easy to live. You know, with HIV, mm-hmm. and uh, if you get AIDS, <laughs> it becomes worse. Yeah. Worse. So I urge, I always urge young people, you know, to keep it safe. However much I, I we go on spreading the message of, you know, don't spread hate, spread love for people living with HIV, giving hope to people living with HIV. That hey, if you get HIV, it's not the end of life. You can still live and live beautiful like mm-hmm. me and study ah. and get a degree <laughs> and you know get children who are HIV negative and get a you know a spouse who is also HIV negative and keep them HIV negative. But we don't encourage people out there to get HIV. Yeah. So um, where did we stop? Yes, the the stigmatization in school, and uh, it happened that uh, that was the time when um, <clears throat> I hope you're connecting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hope you're connecting. My story is a bit long, yeah. but I'm going to try to, I am. Yeah, yes, uh, to make it a bit brief. So um, that was in around my senior two. So the whole of senior one, I was stigmatized. The whole of senior two, I was stigmatized. So when we were concluding senior two, uh, my parents reached, my, my mom sat me down and told me, Gloria, I want to go to another place. But we don't want you to change schools. Mm. Remember, she doesn't know what is happening at, at, what, school. at school. So I, I have to tell her the truth. I have to tell her, Mom, do you know what is happening at school? I'm being stigmatized. Um, you know, I feel I'm not loved. I feel I'm not safe. I had to just narrate everything to her. And uh, at that time, she was very surprised and shocked. She said, Why didn't you tell me? But you know, still, it was a time I was also not in good terms, you yeah. know, <laughs> with them. But um, <clears throat> I thank God uh, that uh, she. Uh, understood me because she was there to support me throughout. Even the time that I hated her the most, she was there. She was there. All my family members were there for wow. me. Were there for me. So my mom asked me, "Which school do you want to go to?" I told her, and then you know, I went to this school where no one, no one knew about my status, mm. and life was okay. a little bit okay. <laughs> life was a little bit okay, and I great. Uh, not graduating, I finished my O level <laughs> and I passed. In fact, I even engaged myself in leadership. Mm. I was a head girl. Wow. Yes. Mm-hmm. When I went to that new school, like no one knew about my status. Although, of course, it was a bit hard for me to take medication. But since I was in leadership, <coughs> I was a head girl. I would make sure that when everyone moves out, you know, sometimes uh, I have to close the dormitory. Yeah. <laughs> so I have to wait for everyone to move to out. Go out uh-huh, and then, then I, you take uh-huh, it in. Then I yeah. take my medication. Yes, then I um I finished my O level. I went to for my A level, and uh, still no one knew about my status at that school, and literally everything was okay. But I also have a very um uh something that I want to share with people. Always want to share with people that happened to me in my A level, and uh, I happened to be still the head girl. 
in LFOST, <laughs> yes, in, in a different LFO, school. In a different school. Wow. <laughs> but also I happened to be uh, in Scripture Union. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, for Scripture Union is like a fellowship where, you know, students come together and pray together. Mm-hmm. And um, mostly it's for um, born-again Christians. I'm a proud born-again Christian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but of course, we all believe in one God. It yeah. doesn't matter whether they're Catholic, whether white or what. We all believe in one God. So uh, since I was uh, the Mama Scripture Union, mm-hmm. I was like, no, it's impossible. How can I be the Mama for Scripture Union and I'd be having HIV? It can't happen. So do you know what I decided to do? Uh-huh. I decided to go into fasting for 40 good days. 40 days. Didn't Jesus fast for 40 days? Yeah. Uh-huh. So I was like, okay. <laughs> let me let me I also can't do fast. this. Uh-huh. <laughs> let me also fast for 40 good days because Jesus also fasted for 40 good days and he saw a miracle. Let me also fast and I'm and I sure get my miracle. I'm going to get a miracle that I'll be healed. So I fast, I fast. The first, the first uh, month goes, you know, first month is for like 30 days. Mm. Then I was meaning with one week. Before I finish that one week, you know what I got? Mm-hmm. HCP. Oh. I don't know if you know HCP. Have you yeah. heard about HCP? Yeah. Do you know how it looks like? You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's of, of course, it's okay. It's okay. So this thing is like, have you ever seen a caterpillar burn? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this thing came around here behind my waist on my back. Mm. And it came, it crossed around my back here. Like mm. it formed a line, a big line. Mm. And that thing, I think it's one of the, the most painful. Oh. Th- I don't know. I don't even know how I can describe the pain. But it's very painful. I could not sit like this. I could not stand. I could not walk. I could not wear clothes because I would feel fire burning me inside. Oh. And uh, of course, by that time, as I told you, you know, I was in full leadership. I went to the school nurse. The school nurse was like, I think she, she saw yeah, it and realized that realized. it was it. I didn't know that it was it. Was so she realized, she told me, I cannot manage you. You go back home. So I think she realized. So she sent me back home. When when I went back home, my mother knew that it was HCP and mm. she had medication for me and I got fine. So uh, why do I want to share this story? However much we believe that God heals and I also believe in God. I'm a good believer, by the way. But um, we believe that all things happen for a reason. Yeah. And uh, personally, I also believe that the fact that we have medication, the fact that... Uh, I have been on medication for the past, uh, you know, over 10 years now, since 2009. How many years are those? Are they? 2009, this mm. is 23. I don't know. Mathematics? <laughs> I know mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's approximately <clears throat> 10 or, you know, over 10 years. So, um, and uh, I have this inner peace in me. I cannot give anyone my virus because I am virally suppressed. Uh, that means I am undetectable. Yeah. And of course, if you are undetectable, it means you are untransmittable. You can't transmit the virus. And to me, that is healing. Yeah. That is enough healing. The fact that we have medication and we can take, trust me, there are so many people out there in the world suffering. They don't have medication. I have a friend of mine, she's in the Netherlands, and she 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 asks for people to donate ARVs. Oh. You can imagine. To give to these countries, especially those countries that mm. are already in wars, mm. the Pakistan, those <coughs> those those countries, those guys are suffering. But we, have, we, we should be grateful to God, to our government, to all the different, you know, um, HIV stakeholders that we have. At least and the to me, is that is there. God's miracle, yeah. you know, because if God can also use the drugs to heal you, mm. and um, uh, and from that time I decided and and. Um, chose to take medication faithfully and uh, there is uh, I don't know if you know uh, Reverend Canon Gideon who uh, is also one of the HIV uh, advocates we yeah, have I in the country him. yes yeah. he already says that uh, for him he takes medication that there is no God mm-hmm. and he prays like there is no what <laughs> medication yeah you get you get that point so whenever you take whenever I am taking my medication, I take it like there is no what? There is no God. And whenever I am praying, I take it that there is no what? Medication. And uh, of course, 
just like I told you, we just have to be grateful that we have the medication. And of course, it's by God's grace <coughs> that we have the what? The medication. So I encourage religious leaders out there not to mislead people. Yeah. I've seen so many, I've A lost lot. by the way so many friends of mine mm. who claim to be prayed for in church mm. and uh, they claim to be healed and you end up dying. It's so sad. It's so sad. Very sad. It's very sad. So we don't have a cure yet for HIV, but uh, we believe that we'll have a cure very soon. Yeah. So if we don't have a cure and we have medication, just take There is hope. Yeah. There is hope. True, mm. true. There is hope. I love that. Yes, there is hope. So mm. let's take the medication yeah. faithfully. Mm. You know, even if you're a Christian, even if you're a pastor, yeah. take your medication. Mm. Take your medication. I wanted to say something, but I hope I will not be crucified. No, it's okay. I had uh -huh. that. I hope people don't come for me. Oh my God. And I hope I'm not mis people don't misunderstood. Come for <laughs> there are so many pastors, even prominent pastors who are taking medication. And they are in fear and they're in denial. And they don't want you know, to disclose the HIV status. And they are the same people who are encouraging people to not to people not to watch, take medication. medication. And we also had yeah, that the recent pastor who died. Mm. I don't know if you know that recent pastor, yeah. one of the pastor who died, mm. that he was in self denial and he refused to take medication, mm. believing in God. Even went to the prayer mountain mm. for so many days, but he ended up what dying. Yeah. So people, let's not take this for granted. For yeah. sake. This is your life, you know. This is I mean, life. if you don't help yourself, mm. why would God uh, want to no, help No, no one is good. Uh -huh. That's what I always tell you. It all starts with you. Yeah. And even if it's not even healthy, mm. if you don't love yourself, no one is going to love you back. It starts with you as an individual. Do your role and God will do his part. Mm. You know, that because there's so many people who even die, not because yeah. of HIV. True. You know? A lot. <laughs> A lot. So do your part. Take your medication. Mm. You know? Yeah. And leave the rest to God. So I want <clears> to tell you i finished of course i went back to school i was very fine now and i finished my a level well mm. so this is this is my story where i call my turning point okay yeah <laughs> yes and of course when i usually when i uh, talk about the story it comes to the conclusion of my story so mm. i'm about to finish my story. <laughs> So anyways, I finished my A-level. I passed very well, by the way. I applied for law school. Mm. And uh, by that time, my dad was still alive. Okay. My so rest in peace. Mm. Uh, and uh, I told him, of course, they ask you after senior six, now, what do you want to do? What is next? So I told them I want to do law. Oh, my mm. dad was like, will you manage? <laughs> You know, I don't know. I don't know if it was uh, it was uh, parents' love. Eh? Okay. Because I even remember when I was still a kid. Eh? No, don't carry that heavy jerry card. But for me, I didn't want it. For me, I thought. For me, I saw myself. You wanted to take part. on yeah. everything. Uh, yes, yeah. That's why even today I think I'm. You know, everywhere I'm very sure. active. You know, because I see myself as a normal person. HIV does not define me. It's just a tiny virus in me that every time i take my medication mm. it is suppressed yeah in fact now it's dead in my blood mm. it's sleeping okay sleeping dead mm. <laughs> does that make sense <laughs> it yes. does because right now it's not active and it's not producing that's why even if i get someone who is negative and uh, you know have intimacy with them i cannot you cannot, affect them. Yeah. yes so um my parents uh tell me were very a bit uh, worried that maybe I will not manage because of my status. But what I told them, I will manage. I will manage. I went in for my pre entries. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they still do pre entries. You know? But I, for us, not we sure. used to do pre entries yeah. to, to go into law school. So I went to my for my first pre entries. I passed. My second pre entries. I passed. Ah, I joined law school. I joined this uh, private university, which is a bit. Um, expensive mm. and uh one of actually one of the best uh law schools we have in uganda yes i'm not i'm not I like I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> i'm not marketing them but to be honest to be honest i i think um i i love you see you in mm -hmm. my heart and i'm so much attached to the the, the law school of you because they teach you to be a christian lawyer you see how people people you know misjudge us lawyers like, yeah oh, lawyers are thieves <laughs> Lawyers are liars. liars. I know. <laughs> but 
<laughs> when you go to use the U, they teach you to be different. a Christian. Yes, it's different. They teach you to be a Christian lawyer. So, anyways, um, I they 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 gave me Kampala campus. Yeah, so I came to Kampala campus, and by that at that at that time, that is when my my dad started falling sick, oh. and it's unfortunate that we lost him oh. uh, to AIDS oh. because he died of advanced um side effects of medication this medication that we take has so many side effects and uh, one of those side effects is liver failure mm. and uh, you know this um intest uh these organs in our body uh because because of the chemicals that this uh meds medication have mm. they tend to yeah. affect them inside and uh, uh you know there's so many also other you know side effects that can come apart from liver failure people some people get cancer some people you know so it's, it's some people get heart failures mm. so there's so many side effects yeah. so uh we lost him due to you know those uh, adverse side effects but yeah we are pushing on <laughs> we are pushing on so that was the time that uh, he was ill and uh, he was sick and literally we didn't have money at home because you know he was the breadwinner my mom was simply a housewife. And you at school. And I'm at yeah. school. And I'm not the only kid who is studying at home. So it was a bit of a hard situation there. Mm. So um, I happened to, you know, get a friend who um, was, you know, so much, uh, can I say, interested in us being roommates. <laughs> okay. So he ca- she came to me and told me, you know, Gloria, you're a good person. You know, can we be roommates? Blah, blah, blah. Like I have no problem, you know. Um, of course, I don't know, but uh, back then when I started, not so many years ago, but mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, back then, uh, you know, I think even now, uh, hostels have, you know, these rooms where you can be three yeah, two people in yeah, one. Yeah, you know? Yeah. So I had a roommate, and she, okay, she became my roommate, and uh, since at home we're financially struggling, literally everything in the room was hers. Oh. You know how you can be at campus and I like know. you know those nice things in your room, the flat screens, the what, you know, you know, so all those things. And at their place, at their home, they they are rich, you yeah. know, they have money. So, <clears throat> and uh, I wish to an extent that I could not even afford to buy food because of you know the condition at home. But should she you know, was there? She was she was there. She had to buy the food, and I would eat. So I think at a certain moment because she, you know she felt like everything in the room is hers she's the one buying food what what i think maybe she felt uh, some sense of entitlement i don't know i don't mm. know how to term it mm. you know so <coughs> excuse me so um she had a boyfriend okay. <laughs> yeah so she had a boyfriend the boyfriend would come in once in a while so maybe when she got that sense of entitlement she was like maybe i don't have any say or i'm not contributing anything you know to the well being of mm. us in the room, she was like, she wants my boyfriend to move in. Oh, no, yeah, that was stupid, right? <laughs> Sorry to say, <laughs> yes, so, <laughs> yes, so, um, she wanted the boyfriend to move in with us. Since poor me, I you could not even say. afford, yeah, I, I could not even afford uh, um, to buy food. I didn't have what a toy. Uh-huh. I couldn't say no, you get. So I had to accept, you know, but it was, of course, very hard. You know, sometimes I have to just leave the room for yeah. the privacy, you have mm. to just from outside. So it was a bit challenging, but um, I don't know how some men be. I've said some. Yeah, I used to say not all, all men. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then men started complaining. Why <laughs> say all of us? Not all so, of us. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, so I don't know how some men be. So I think he picked interest in me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he came to me and told me, Gloria, I like you. Trouble. I know. I don't know. Are you crazy? I don't know. Are you insane? Are you okay? I mean, I told him, how? Your girlfriend is my room. Your girlfriend is my classmate. Because we used to study together. We are, cl- we are classmates. Mm. You know? How can I even do that? So, still, I don't know how some men can be. <laughs> uh, so, I think uh, he made his anger into shame mm. and so he has full of so is that how they de- yes. <laughs> translate it mm. <laughs> yeah so he since he had access to the room he went um in the room and i uh, went to my suitcase 
and uh, I, he had suspected, I think, because before all this, he would see me take medication and she would ask me, why are you taking medication? And I would tell him, because I wasn't very okay by that time to disclose my status, yeah. I would lie to him, I have stomach pain, I have headache, I could not tell him the truth. I think he suspected. Yeah, so uh, when I said no to him, he went to the room when no one was there without even my consent. He went in my suitcase. Uh, he looked for my medication and uh, he also got, got my medical forms and he realized that I'm HIV mm. positive. So he went to the girlfriend who was in the room and told her that I was seducing him. Oh. And I knew that I was HIV positive <laughs> to infect him with HIV so that he can infect the girl. Oh. You can't imagine. <clears throat> Still some men. I don't know how some men can be. So at that time it was it was a very hard moment for me. I could not believe him. I, how? He's the one who came to me and now he's changing the whole story, you know, because of shame and whatever. He's Pretend turning everything against the, the me. Good one. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> making himself be the good one and mm. making me to be the bad person. I tried to sit my friend down to explain to her what really happened. I don't know if, if maybe she was also Maybe deeply in love, she didn't listen to me. So you know what I did? I ran away from school again. Remember, this this is my second time. Yeah. But this is campus. When you run away from a school, you cannot <coughs> go and start in a university and begin from that level. You have to just go back, go back fresh. Yeah. And also the fact that at home we were struggling, I could not literally tell my parents that now this is what is happening. Okay, so. Well, I, uh, I, one time when I was where I ran to, because <clears throat> I missed school for two good weeks. Imagine mm. missing school for two good two weeks. weeks. Meanwhile, in all those two good weeks, people, rumors had started spreading around the hostel and village ah, and the, 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 the university. How that girl is a, yeah. a, a bitch yeah. who wants to sleep around with people's uh, boyfriends and infect them with each other. Of course not. People didn't hear my story. They yeah. had their story because literally if you have money, everyone, you know, believes who, in you. Who you believe know? you, Gloria. I, I know, I know. So <laughs> so while I was there, I talked to myself and um, I asked myself, Gloria, is your HIV status going to change? I told myself no because I had tried it before fasting yeah, for 40 days and yeah. nothing changed, you know. I told myself, Gloria, you are a bold person and bold people don't run away from problems, but rather go and face their problems and find solutions. Wow. So I had to go back to hostel. Mm. I made this the hit. And immediately they saw me, they were like, for them, they can't be with someone who's HIV positive. <laughs> so they had to pack everything. Imagine, imagine being in a room like this and all these things. <laughs> Are not yours, and then people just wake up one day and be like, We cannot live with you because they HIV. They pack everything, just remain with your car small bed and your car suitcase and your car bag. And your car bag. Huh? I was like, Okay, it's okay, you can go. So at that time, I told myself, Gloria, I brought you to school to study. I made the library my best friend. I studied, I read, and trust me, that semester was one of the best. Wow. Because I focused, but I didn't only do that. I told myself, glory. I got the zeal to prove these people wrong. That even though I am HIV positive, I can be. I can still I be, can be someone. someone. Yeah. yeah, I can still be someone in life. I can still contribute to development. I can still achieve. You know. So I got the zeal in me to prove them wrong because everyone was against me, and no one, of course, I could not go explain it to everyone that this is what happened. This is what happened. So no one knew my side of the story. So I was like, okay, it's okay. Let me leave it the way it is. And uh, I remember I would always uh, wake up in the morning, go to school, come back, lock myself in my room. Because no one wanted to talk to me. And I was like, okay, it's okay. You know? So one day I was there in my room. I got the, the, you know, the zeal to prove them wrong. I was like, what can I do you know, to prove these people wrong? You know, I got the fire in me, you know? I don't know if you get my point. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I went online and um, I researched about HIV in Uganda. I just put yeah. HIV in Uganda. Mm. And I happened to learn uh, about, um, 
I happy to land on uh, this pageant called the Y Plus <coughs> Beauty Pageant. Mm, the one you read for Miss yeah. Y Plus 2017, 2018. 18, yeah. Yes, so I was like, oh, okay, let me give it a try. So wow. this pageant basically uh, empowers young people living with HIV to be change makers and be ambassadors of change. Mm. And uh, you'll be a voice for, you know, other Others, young people. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, let me give it a try. So I went for the audition. They were in the world. Of mm. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up very early in the morning. I was the first person to wear. Oh. I didn't even find it my first time to go to bed because I had the zeal. Eh? Yeah, you, you know? want to prove something. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I wanted to prove something. <laughs> So I went to Wero, I did the auditions, and uh, after the auditions, I went through, and uh, we went to Fort Porto, still at my first time to go to Fort Porto, we went for the, you know, boot camp, we came back to Kampala, and that night, at Hotel Africana, I was crowned Miss Wife Plus. Wow. 2017. To 18. And uh, my journey started from, from there. there. Yeah, for, you know, being the voice for the voiceless, representing young people living with HIV on different platforms, both national and international. I, you know, I uh, started advocating for uh, the rights of people living with HIV, sexual reproductive health and rights. Mm. I became, you know, um, I, I part of the different committees in policy making because we've always advocated for meaningful engagement of young people living with HIV in decision making. Mm. We are tired of people making decisions, decisions for, for us. us. Yeah. Because we have a voice. We are educated. We know what we want, you know, and we 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 know what we need, you know. So I kept on advocating for meaningful engagement, you know, and I'm glad that at least there is a change. Yeah. At least uh, on all committees, even Ministry of Health, even um Uganda its commission where I'm um, a youth representative almost I've recently I've been part of the 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 national committee at Ministry of Health for uh, ending um, AIDS in children by 2030 mm. and I uh, recently launched it launched the, um, the, the, the the global the national alliance of ending AIDS in children by 2030 at uh, in a hotel. Mm. So, I mean, there is progress. There is progress. Yes, and I'm glad that all these were my efforts back then wow. in 2017 <laughs> where we were making noise. You know, as advocates, they call us noise makers. You know, always made noise. Put us on the table. Nothing for us without us. Engage us meaningfully, blah, blah, blah. But I'm glad that, you know, there is progress in that. So, I didn't stop there, by the way. I also went in for Miss Uganda. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think you missed out on that in my bio. <laughs> I think I did. Yes. So I was crowned uh, Miss uh, Miss Uganda Rising Woman. Wow. That was in 2019. Oh. Yes. And uh, also, I even two titles Miss Uganda Rising Woman and uh, Miss Uganda Miss Purpose. Miss yes. Uganda Miss Purpose. Yes, that was the year of Naka Kandi, Bolivia ah, Naka Kandi, yeah. if you know her. Yeah. Yes, I thought I didn't get the main, main, main crown, but I'm glad that I got. We are glad you, know, you got some things. things. And still, still that very year, I won an award of the best beauty queen because wow. of the good work I was doing in my community by Papa. I don't know if you know Papa, Pearl of Africa Fashion Award. Mm. Yes, and from that time, to be honest, the rest is history. I have traveled around the world. Um, still, uh, you know, um, uh, in the advocacy arena, advocating for us, people living with HIV, uh, lobbying for resources for people living with HIV. Uh, I've been on different national spaces. I've been in the community, empowering yeah. up. I think you're, you're seeing my work. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> a lot of outreaches. <laughs> yeah. And then, the, 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 tell us more about also Gilo. Yeah, when, yeah. You, when does Gilo mm. come in? Yeah, so Gilo still came in at that time. Um, I, I felt like um, um, I, I would do more if I have this organization for young people. Mm. And I can tell you that however much we have just started, we have reached out to over 5,000. 5,000. 5,000 young people. Wow. Yes. That's 5, in uh, which period? Um, we have, we started the organization in 2019 mm. but we are fully we were fully registered or legally registered yeah. this year oh unfortunately be, thank you so much mm. and we launched um i launched my organization in march on 25th march no not march may mm. 25th may that's when okay. i launched my, this very year mm. but of course we were doing our work 
since 2019. Yeah. You know, 2019, they're at the end when we started COVID. You know, uh -huh, then yeah. COVID came in. Also, 2021 was another year of yeah. COVID. Mm. Then 2022, we're still, so, you know, recollecting ourselves and all that. But I'm glad that, uh, you know, you have now finally... Um, uh, uh, we finally fully registered it and uh, we are doing a lot of work on empowering young people, especially economic empowerment oh. because we believe that uh, there are so many adults and girls and young women. When you look at the statistics, yeah. they are very terrified. Every week, over 500 adults and girls and young women are getting HIV. Every week. Every week. Every, over 500. How many are those in a month? That's a very big How many number. Those, in a year? those are very, very big. But we also believe, why are these young people, why are these adults and girls and young women getting HIV? It's because they're not economically empowered. Because most of these, these actually when you look at the statistic, it's women who have women. HIV the most, yeah. but it's men who spread <laughs> HIV the most. You see that, 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 that yeah. can I call it the technique? I don't know if it's the technique. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so so literally, men infect more HIV, but because they don't want to go to hospitals, there are less numbers of them in the statistics yeah. or in the you know in the data, and uh, they actually also fear to start medication, mm. so they end up, and especially older men, so they end up getting these young girls, giving them money, what we call transactional sex, money. they give them money. And they end up what? Mm. Getting infected. Mm -hmm. When you look at the statistics of girls getting pregnant, adolescent girls getting pregnant, still on that very day, when, I, when the one I told you where we launched um, the, 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 the National Alliance of Ending AIDS in Children by 2030, we were with Dr. Atwine. And I think that, that video went so viral and she broke down in tears of the girls who are getting pregnant. Very young age. At very young age. It's very traumatizing, and they don't only get uh, pregnant. Remember where uh, where pregnancy passes is also where HIV yeah. was. <laughs> uh, okay, apart from you know us who were born with HIV, but but for 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 for, for so yeah. many girls who get pregnant, they also get what HIV, yeah. and yeah. these are very scary. You know, these are very scary numbers. So. Um, we we believe that if we economically empower these adults and girls and young women, if we give them the skills to make their own money, they will not be lied by these, you mm. know, men, yeah. some men. <laughs> <laughs> not all men, because we have a gentleman in our house. <laughs> yes, some men, you know, so that uh, they can also be, you know, empowered. They can, you know, be, um, they can be independent, financially independent. And uh, also they can be able to, you know, this will help them make decisions yeah. of, on themselves, but also decisions that, uh, you know, concern their sexuality and their, you know, their body autonomy. Yeah. So yeah, what so, are some of the things that you're training these young people into and mm -hmm. then in which regions mm -hmm. are you covering the whole of Uganda or? No, uh, right now uh, um, I uh, we are focusing on the sub-urban uh, areas in Kampala, okay. which is in Kamocha, where mm. we take we train them skills like mm. uh, you know liquid soap making. Mm. Uh, we're trying to also expand and getting many other you know partners on board who can help us in hairdressing. But these mm. are also you know future prospects. Yeah. Uh, you know <coughs> makeup. Um, you know all those hands-on skills that young people can make. But for now, we are doing so much in, you know, mm. um, uh, liquid soap making and also um, recycling, recycling of um, glass. Okay. Yes, that is a very unique area. Not recycling bottles, but glass. glass. Yes. And we have so many good uh, materials that we have cycled, recycled in uh, Kamocha. Okay. And I, I hope maybe Civic TV can come one of day. Of course. Check it, check it out. Yes, but also we are so much in Kassanda district. Ah. Yes, yeah. and uh, also when you look at the, stati the statistics there, they are very worrying. And it's very unfortunate that um, when people uh, people in these rural areas, when a girl finishes P7, that is it. Actually, not only a girl. Even the boys. Even the boys. That is yeah. it. That is it. So it's very worrying. That is why we're also focusing on education. Yeah. Both formal education and mm -hmm. Informal, informal education mm. and we believe that if a girl stays in school 
they'll be able to achieve their yeah. dreams. They'll be able to become good citizens of the country, right? So we are encouraging girls to stay in school. We are empowering them to stay in school. Mm. And uh, that is why I'm actually so much passionate about that SDG4 quality education. And I've been closely working, and okay, not even closely, we've been working with Building Tomorrow to see that all children go to school. To school. Because we believe that education <coughs> contributes a lot yeah, to the development. Lot. Education contributes a lot to the better world, mm. you know. And for us to have a better world, we have to be educated, mm. be informed, mm. you know. So we are promoting education in mm. my organization. And we call it, actually, we call it the, the three E's, empowerment, mm -hmm. education. But of course, education is both formal and informal. And informal. Yeah, even the knowledge, basic knowledge on other different aspects of life, like leadership, mm. communication skills, um, you know, those th those uh, skills that you can educate you with to um, be better people or be better versions of yourselves, mm. uh, we prioritize them. And also it takes us to the third E, which is equipment. equipment. So we not only educate them, but we but keep them with the skills them, yeah. to be better leaders. We keep them with the skills to be, uh, you know, um, good citizens, to mm. be better versions of themselves. And we believe that if we follow those three E's, the world will be a better place. There will be a change. There will be a change. And then also you're, 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 you're doing uh, music. Mm -hmm. There's the, the Y plus band music. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so it also started back then. Actually, for it, it started back then in 2018. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the, for the, the organization, it was 2019. Then for the the, the band, it was 2018. And the sole um, objective of the band was to uh, develop talents, mm -hmm. but at the same time also use talents for people, yeah. young people living on effective HIV to, uh, to use it, use their talents to create a positive impact through entertainment, yeah. you know, entertainment. Entertainment a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, um, I, one of the things that really challenged me before I formed the band is that uh, when I went to the communities, people still believe in you know those myths and misconceptions that mm. uh, people living with HIV cannot sing, cannot dance, <laughs> cannot do anything. It's like, wow, ah, who tells you that? You know, let us show you that we can sing. Let us show you that we can dance. Mm. You know, so I came up with uh, the the White Plus Music Band. I it was just a call. <laughs> I made a call. Some few friends came, you know, and joined me. And uh, we have now an album of six songs. Wow. Yes, and they're very entertaining, good entertaining songs. Whereby we talk about um, gender-based violence. Mm. We talk about. Um, GBV, mm. that is gender based violence. Still, <laughs> we, we, we talk about the SDGs. We yeah. talk about um, the. We, we also have a song on um, uh, fight HIV, fighting. You know, like encouraging everyone to you know come on board and we fight HIV. Not people living with HIV, but HIV. HIV. We are fighting HIV. Not yeah. people living with HIV. Yeah, true. Yeah, so one of the things that uh, <laughs> why why I've so much highlighted on that is people are misunderstanding us. That when we come up and say let's fight HIV, people be like, okay, even Only people, even, even people who have HIV, let's fight them. Yeah. <laughs> that is why people don't like us. That's why people, that's why people discriminate us. Because they feel like maybe we are afraid that we have what? Mm. We have HIV. Even mm. us, we didn't want to, have, personally, if I was to choose to live negatively or positively, I would choose to be negative. Yeah. We didn't have, a, some of a us, choice. we didn't have a yeah. choice. Yeah. You know, but even if someone just got it, I don't think they would really love, you know, to get HIV. Mm. Some people should not fight us. Yeah. You know, and, and I told you recently that, um, uh, that uh, we went to court with Pastor Stemper mm. and uh, for him, he was claiming that the white plus beauty pageant is promoting HIV, is beautifying HIV, you know, that uh, because because we come out and say that we are beautifully living with HIV, we are encouraging. So you're encouraging uh -huh. others because you're proud. Uh -huh. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But not, yeah, that's not it's our not, case. Yeah. You know, we want to show the world that you can still live with HIV mm. and still live a normal and beautiful life, mm. a healthy and happy life mm. today. But we don't encourage people to have what? Yeah. HIV. And then he was even saying that for us, we call ourselves Miss HIV. 
because as now he he was saying that since we have miss hiv we should have miss gonorrhea <laughs> miss syphilis i watched yeah? that you, you watched i'm glad you watched but i'm glad that uh, at least um court was on our favor and uh, they really understood that mm. uh, it's not good and proper and illegal to go on and promote stigma and discrimination mm. among people in HIV. And he was even saying shamelessly that for him, he's fighting HIV. Mm -hmm. That he was even awarded by the president to fight HIV. Which kind of person fights HIV if mm. he's against people living with HIV? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now that the, you know we have changed the narrative that people living with HIV are the ones frontlining Mm. the fight against HIV. I think that would really be enough to show that mm. we're not a threat. Yeah. People should not fight us. <clears throat> people should work with us. We didn't want, I didn't want, you know, and I, I don't even think that I would really, really want my kids. You know, yeah. I don't even think True. that my kids will have it because <laughs> I, I don't want them to well, have it. Anyways, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's how my journey was. And uh, I, as I told you earlier also, we have a live band session for the White Plus Music Band. So apart from advocacy for the band, yeah, we yeah. also advanced it yeah. to live band. And, wow. Uh, yeah, we are waiting for people to give us gigs. People should really <laughs> give Gloria gigs. Yeah. And as we come to the conclusion <coughs> of the conversation, yes, to, to the young people, you're also doing social media influencing, you're doing a lot of international connections. How are you able to do all this? And then also you speak to, to the young person out there mm. who is not taking life seriously. Encourage them, yes. Well, talking about multitasking, I don't know. Because to be honest, sometimes I also look at myself I'm like, okay, did I, did I really do that? <laughs> I remember when I was at campus, I was working at the same time. Because that was the time that um, my dad had dad was struggling. Us. Okay. Mm. After he died, ah, of course, life had to move on yeah. and I had to study. Mm. But remember, my mom was a what? Mm. A stay home yeah. mother. Mm. So she unfortunately had to get loans for me to do what? But then I saw her struggling. I was like, what can I do to help my mom? Mm. You know, because we were in it together. Yeah. You know, so what I did, I got a job. Okay. And it was a full time job. Oh. And imagine getting a full-time job and you're also in school full-time. Full-time. And it was not easy. Not easy. I would wake up in the morning and this job that I had, it was uh, <clears throat> in a big organization that we even had biometric. Mm -hmm. You would go and ah. clock in, you know? <laughs> yeah. So they would see the time you have come you've in come at work. And then the time you're leaving. Uh -huh, the time yeah. you're leaving. So I would wake up in the morning. I now have lectures at 8. Wake up by 6, I'm at work. I clock in, I do some work, I get a border, I go to campus, I, I study, I come back after lunch when my bosses need me for meetings. So it was hard. Mm -hmm. But also that was the time when I was in for Miss Uganda, Miss uh, White Plus, so yeah. I would, you know, go alone, go, go to, you know, events, travel out of the country. But... I, I, I thank God that I think maybe he programmed me that way. Yeah. But sometimes I feel like this is ministry for me. This is what I'm yeah. meant to do. So I think it just, it, it was God to be honest. I can't say that it was my power. <laughs> it was not my energy. Well, yeah, but I'm glad that I'm managing. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> so we are really, really time bad, but we would love to continue on with the Gloria. But you can follow Gloria on Twitter. Yes, she, you can share the your Twitter The HIV handle. Beauty Queen on yes, Twitter. Yes, the HIV Beauty Queen yeah. on Twitter. She's doing a lot of amazing work, outreaches. Follow her uh, amazing work and also support her. Support the Y Plus Music Band. Yes, and also the work that she's doing with mm. Gilo. Mm. Yes. Yeah, maybe I can give my last remarks yes. <clears throat> to young people. Oh my God, young people. We have 1.4 million people living with HIV in Uganda. In Uganda. And 70, approximately 75% of those 1.4 million people mm. are young people. So meaning young people have more HIV. Yeah. And when you look at the statistics, young people are getting that the new infections of HIV are mostly More among the young people. The young people. Why? We are asking our quest the question, the big why are young people 
getting infected with HIV every day. Mm. But that question goes to all of us. All of us. Not only me. Yeah. <clears throat> because excuse me, because we're asking that question. And um this year's theme of World AIDS Day. World AIDS Day was on Friday last yeah. week. Yes. And uh we were we had a theme of my responsibility. Meaning that it is not the government's responsibility. It's not the HIV advocates like Gloria to come and advocate against HIV. Mm. But it is everyone's Everyone. responsibility. Yes. Everyone should come on board. Mm. At the end of the day, if God forbid, <laughs> if you get HIV, it will be you to take the medication. So what is your role as a person who doesn't have HIV? Your role is to keep it safe. Mm. Go and test for HIV. Know your HIV status. If you are negative, protect yourselves. I mean, we have all the preventive measures. We have the condoms. We have the pep and prep. We have the vaginal ring. We have uh, the government has, and the government and stakeholders has put everything on a silver plate. Information is everywhere. But why are we still what failing, failing on, on registering? You know, yeah. zero new infections. It's mm. because people have neglected their responsibility. And recently someone was asking me, do you think the government has done a lot to end <laughs> HIV? And I asked, I told him that is not the right why question. Why the government? <laughs> exactly. I told him that's not the right question. The right question is what have you done yeah. Yeah. to fight HIV? It, this is not the government. Okay, who is the government? Mm. We are the government for heaven's sake. Yeah. So we all should come on board mm -hmm. and uh, you know fight against HIV because we want to see by 2030 when we don't have anyone dying of AIDS. Uh, if you are HIV negative, keep it safe. Keep it safe. If you are HIV positive, my sweetheart, it's not the end of life. You can still live. You can still study. You can still achieve <coughs> all your dreams. Don't give up, you know. HIV does not define anyone. It doesn't define me. It doesn't define you. And no one. And to the general public, stop stigmatizing us. Philly Lutaya sang and said, Today it's me. Tomorrow. Tomorrow it can be you. The person yeah. you are stigmatizing today, tomorrow it can be you who they are stigmatizing. Yeah. So don't be stigmatized. Love us, appreciate us the way we are, and support us because we are one people. Mm. Thank you so much. Wow, it has been really amazing having Gloria in the studios today. Thank you so much, Gloria, for coming through. We Pleasure. really appreciate your time. Yes, and we appreciate everything that you're doing for the young people in this uh, in our country and in the world at large. Yes, it is a busy season, but remember to be safe, keep it on, and enjoy mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> responsibly. Especially this festive season. I know. Ah, people are going to go into, you know, marriages. <laughs> yes. And... Yeah, so I've been your host, Madrin. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.